Hello everyone. Welcome to episode two of the Visible Mending Workshop presented by the Davenport Public Library. Today we're going to talk about making felt patches like these. These can be used to cover small holes. They're also very decorative and they're lots of fun to make. They're kind of addictive in fact. Uh, the idea for these came from this book, the Visible Mending Book by Arona Kanaraj. Uh, this is my personal copy but we do have copies at the library if you want to take a look at it. It's really a great book, lots of great ideas. And here's her chapter on making felt patches. She also has some ideas for what you can stitch on the felt. It's the kind of thing where you can let your imagination run wild and use colors and themes and designs of your personal favorite. So I also urge you to uh, check her Instagram account. Uh, lots of great tutorials and inspiration there. And again, her handle for Instagram is bookhow. So it's at B-O-O-K-H-O-U. So I'm going to show you some of the felt patches I've made, and then I'm going to demonstrate a few of uh, the techniques I'm using them. Uh, this one is just very simple, uh, flowery looking, kind of abstract flowers, um, very random. Uh, this one, I just uh, sat and stitched a tiny little heart on a piece of white felt. And then I layered it onto a darker uh, color of uh, felt and then just used a running stitch around it. Uh, before I did that, I cut out the white felt with a pair of pinking shears. Kind of makes it look like a postage stamp, I think. Uh, this one is one of the templates that uh, is in the Visible Mending book. Uh, it looks like a houseplant leaf here. Um, it just very simply drew the shape, which is just a very simple shape and the lines. Uh, this is all satin stitch. And then I went back and used a little bit of brown embroidery thread to outline the different sections. And finally, I have this little, um, little sunflower. Very simple straight stitches for the petals. And then in the center, I used French knots. But I'll show you an alternative for making the center too. For that, I'm going to do something uh, a little bit different, but some of the same techniques. Let's talk about the tools and materials you'll need to complete a felt patch. For a more in-depth discussion of the different kinds of tools that we'll use throughout the workshop and the different kinds of materials, please refer back to episode one where I talk about them in depth. And I also have a list in the description below that episode of all of the materials. So for the felt patch, you're going to need some basics like a pair of snips to cut your threads. Uh, fabric shears aren't 100% necessary, but are pretty handy, especially at the end when you're cutting your patch out of the felt. You might need a marking tool. It's not absolutely necessary. It comes in kind of handy. Uh, this is a Frixum pen, which will the lines will disappear with heat, such as from an iron or a hairdryer. You can also use a pencil or a ballpoint pen, of course. Those marks do not come out, so be sure that your embroidery covers them. And I'm also going to show you just freehanding it. You don't have, absolutely have to mark anything. You'll, of course, will need some needles, uh, at least one. Uh, if you got our kit, which was a limited supply, and you were able to get one of those, there are two needles in the kit. One is a regular embroidery needle like this. The other is much longer, and that is a sashiko needle. We'll start using those in the next two episodes. But for this, uh, for the felt patches, all you need are the embroidery needles. Um, I used a straight edge to create one of my patterns. Uh, this is a quilting ruler. You don't have to use a quilting ruler. You can use a straight edge. You can go without using a straight edge at all. That's just optional. Of course, you'll need some threads. Um, I've been doing handwork for a very long time, so I have all kinds of threads and all kinds of colors. So I just picked a few out of my, my gigantic stash. Um, this is DMC, which is pretty much the standard and is very uh, available. If you got the kit, you'll have at least two colors in there. They're just randomly picked. If you don't like those colors or you want more colors, by all means, 
uh, dip into your stash or uh, even purchase more if you wanted to. Uh, DMC floss is very easy to find in the fabric stores and in the craft stores. DMC comes in a huge range of colors. They have variegated. Um, go ahead and pick out one or two of your favorites if you want to try a little more. They're not terribly expensive. There are other, are other brands available such as Anchor and um, Cosmo. Um, I think Anchor is available locally as well. Any of those would be fine. And you're going to need some felt. Again, if you got the kit, there'll be a couple pieces of felt in your kit. Uh, random colors, again. If you don't particularly like the colors or you want to try something more, it's, again, very available in the local craft stores. Um, a sheet, a 9 by 10 or 8 by 10 sheet of felt, it's not terribly expensive. If you wanted to try or you really get hooked on this and you want to go a little further. Okay, let's make a couple uh, felt patches here. Of course, you're gonna need your floss to make these and I recommend using three strands. Now, embroidery floss, like this DMC and uh, Anchor, which is also pretty common that, to find around here, is what's called six strand embroidery floss because there are six little strands here. And uh, for these patches, I use three strands. You're gonna wanna separate them out so let me show you a couple tricks when working with embroidery floss. Um, hold on to, gently hold on to the smaller band here, and you'll notice there's a thread coming out at the start of the skein, and you just pull there and it'll pull out nice and easy without tangling. Now you've got six strands and you're, you could go like this and separate out three, just by pulling them apart like that. But a better way to do it, and a really slick, easy way, is to pull one strand. Let's see if I can get a hold of one here. So pull just and hold that one strand in your fingers and then pull it out. And it'll pull out real slick and easy, no knots, no tangling. And I just, for this, I just do a simple knot like this. Next couple episodes when we're working with Sashiko, I'll show you how to. Uh, make a tailor's knot or a quilter's knot. It works a little better with that with that kind of thread than with this kind of thread. I've got a little uh, needle keeper here where I threaded some needles in advance with some different colors. Um, this one is the first one I did and it's a little, actually quite frankly, it's a little sloppy, um, but I can fix that. It's gonna look just fine. Um, and this is satin stitch. This is probably gonna be the stitch you use the most. I would recommend that you not make your stitches too long because they'll tend to get caught if you if you have them on a jacket or something like that. Um, and also, if these felt patches are great for covering small holes, so you don't need a gigantic patch um, if you're using it for mending. And um, satin stitch is just is super basic. It's just um, laying down your thread next to each other so that they form a solid. Um, solid shape. It's a good fill stitch. Um, I used, this is all satin stitch, pretty much all satin stitch. Now you'll notice here when I made that stitch, I kind of left a gap there. And there's a couple ways you can fix that. You can pull the thread out and lay it down again, or you can just go back and fill it in. So when this thread runs out, it should, it should very soon here. I'm gonna go back to this darker color. This up here, a little sloppy, but that's okay, it's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna finish off the back by just um, scooping under some of the stitches in the back and then putting my needle through that loop. You can see that? And pulling it through and that creates a little knot there. And I just clip that off. Set this aside so it doesn't fall on the floor and I step on it, that would be tragic. And I already have this one threaded and ready to go. I'm just gonna start up again here. Again, this one's already knotted so so I just keep going, fill this in. 
Now, another trick with satin stitch, if your edges are kind of ragged like this one here on mine, is to use an outline stitch like I did on this one. I used some brown thread and just did simple little outline stitches, little just little stitches, nothing fancy, and that kind of smoothed out all the edges here. So I'm gonna set this one aside. Now this one I've already drawn out. I just drew a little tiny circle and I drew some lines because I am not the um, good at keeping straight lines. And I've already got some colors here. This is similar. This is gonna be kind of an offshoot and similar to this one that I made. Now this one, oops, uh, is a little sunflower and these center stitches are all French knots. Uh, which is a fun way, it gives a little texture. It's kind of hard to tell uh, on the camera here, but a little bit of texture. And then I made just little petals all the way around it with straight stitch. So I'm gonna do something similar, but instead I'm gonna do a sun. So I'm gonna um, just do oops, satin stitch here in the center of the sun. I just fill this all in with satin stitch. Felt is a dream to work with. It's soft, it's easy to run a needle and thread through it. Of course, a huge advantage of felt is that it doesn't fray. So you can, you do your stitching, you cut out your patch and that's it, it's ready to go. You can applique it to um, a jacket or a pair of jeans to your backpack or your lunch bag, whatever you want to do with it. You don't have to worry about hemming it. You could even sew a little safety pin to the back and use it as a pen, a, re a removable pin. Okay, so there's the center. I'm going to start here with this tall one. And what I'm actually going to do is just slightly to the left of that that straight line. So just it's very tiny, so it doesn't have to be a, a huge amount off. And I go up to the center here, and then go, then go to the other side of the spoke. And again, not in the center, but just ever so slightly off to the to one side of the spoke. And up to the top again. And then to fill that in, I'm just gonna now go in the center where the spoke was at that I had drawn in. And right up the middle to fill it in. Now, if you wanted to fill it in a little more, so it's a little fuller, by all means, go ahead and do that. Now, for this, um, they're going to overlap just a little bit. That will help fill it in a little bit too. So again, slightly off. This is a little shorter uh, ray that I made here. So up to the center, off to the side of the drawn spike, and then up to the top and fill in the center. You know, if it's a little off from what you drew, that's fine. The drawings are just guides. They're not, they're not the law. You can adjust as you go along. I find these kind of addictive to do. You keep coming up with more and more ideas of different things you can make with them. Different pictures. I'm not much of an artist, but um, these small little, um, Oops, now this one I went right down the middle first because I wasn't, I was babbling and I wasn't paying attention. So now I'm going to do the sides. Let's see how that works. Felt is very forgiving. If you don't like a stitch, you can pull it out or you can just cover it up. Now that one I pulled a little tight, so I'm gonna flatten out the felt a little bit.
So I'm going to proceed all the way around. Okay, okay, so this one's going to be uh, more of a freeform one. I'm not going to make any markings. Um, you can, uh, even on dark um, felt, if you have a, uh, you can use the Taylor's chalk. Uh, or you can go freeform like I'm going to do here. And it's going to be similar to this one where I make these little flowers. Now these are a very simple stitch. Um, if you've ever done any embroidery, you've probably done a chain stitch or a la this is lazy daisy stitch, which is just a chain stitch that isn't connected in a, in a line. So to make a, a lazy daisy, you just bring it up. This is going to be the center of the flower and you kind of make a loop and hold it like this. Okay. You put your needle back in where you um, started. Look out for the knot underneath. And then you bring the needle back up about how long you want your, um, your petal to be. So you can make real small ones, you can make larger ones. Again, I wouldn't go super big in this kind of a uh, patch situation because uh, it might get caught uh, and then so your thread is up here at the point uh, you pull this thread you can pull it real tight so it makes a real narrow loop or you can leave it a little wider open I'm kind of doing something kind of in between not super tight but I don't want it too big either again because it might get caught on something and then you bring your needle down right at the top there and there's still a chance to adjust it a little bit so it's nice and even and then what I did to fill in those other flowers was I brought it back up at the where I started it all. And I just made a single stitch right down the center here. And that kind of helped fill in the uh, flower so it makes a petal. Now you can uh, make your petal a little rounder if you want. Uh, you can make it smaller and round. That would be really cool too. And I just... Uh, made the petals like this. The center, and you can also go without putting stitches in the center and just leave it open. That also works nicely. Just this a little bit. And see here, I did three, um, three flowers and it just seemed kind of loose. For a patch, you want it to be fairly firm, and that's why satin stitch is so good because it, it gives you a nice firm layer so that it, the patch will hold up nicely. So I filled it in with these little tiny um, random abstract stars. It could be little tiny flowers. So all I did was, once I had all my flowers done, I just filled in around them, and all I did was simple little straight stitches. And I made them kind of small, so they could fit in little areas. Ouch, got myself with a needle. Just simple straight stitches, nothing fancy here. Centered around. Some I put up close to the existing flowers that I had done so that it looks like they were kind of coming out from behind. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna work on these for a little bit and I'll be back and show you the results. Okay, here are the patches all stitched. So the finishing on these is super simple. This is the one where I did just two colors and did satin stitch. Kind of turned out kind of weird looking, but hey, it's an experiment. It's worth trying. So leave about a half inch around the outside of the um, stitching so that when you sew it on as a patch, you have room to applique it on. I'm cut to see what this looks like. And this is when your fabric shears come in handy. It felt real easy to cut, but um, you're definitely going to want uh, some uh, good sharp scissors to cut your fabric. So there's that one, kind of 
as you see, um, I went ahead and added little outline stitches around the whole thing. Kind of helps even it up. It was a little uh, rough looking, but there you go for that little one. And here's the sun, how it came out. Again, this is a pretty small one and there's plenty of room around it. Cut it out like this. Um, you can leave it like this. You could layer it onto another piece of felt if you wanted a little bit bigger patch. And then here's the flowers, how they came out. And this one, because it's just kind of a um, organic shape, I'm just cutting around the outside. I'm not trying to make it a square or an even circle. And again, you could layer this over another piece of felt. There you go. You could leave it as is. And, uh, uh, applique it like this. Uh, okay, that's it for our felt patch episode. I hope you had fun and were inspired to try one of these. If you did try one and you have an Instagram account and you post a picture to your account, uh, please include the tag, the hashtag DPL Visible Mending. DPL stands for Davenport Public Library. And also tag the library's Instagram account, which is at Davenport Library. If you have questions or suggestions, you can email me directly at ahetzler at davenportlibrary.com. Or you can leave a question or comment in the uh, just below here on the YouTube video. Now don't lose your patch. Hang on to it. We're going to be using it as part of our sampler drawstring bag that we'll be working on throughout these uh throughout the workshop and we'll be using it uh, when we create the drawstring bag in episode eight. I hope you can join us next week when we'll start working on Boro patching, which this is an example of. Until then, happy stitching. Mm -hmm.